You can download the arts in the video for free, link in the description. For a Hollow Knight style attack, with the ability to pogo or noodle jump, we will first create the player scene, create a new scene with the character body 2D as the core, then go to scene, scene save as, and save it, and a sprite 2D node to the scene, set the player art to the player texture that you can download for free, link in the description, set the H frames to 5 and the V frames to 3, and I will set the frame to 1 so to see the character, set the texture filter to the nearest since we're using pixel art. Additionally, I will also apply an offset of negative 4 on the Y axis so that the player is centered vertically. This is necessary for the attack to be positioned properly. Add an animation player node as a child of the sprite 2D node, right click, rename, rename it to frame anim, then go to animation, new, name it idle, set the total time to 0 0.1, make sure the blue playhead cursor is at 0, then select the sprite 2D node, and keyframe the frame property at 1, then go to animation, new, name it walk, set the total time to 0 0.2, set the cursor snap to 0 0.05, and enable snap to timeline cursor, then hold down control or command and use the scroll wheel to zoom into the timeline, make sure the blue cursor is at 0, then set frame to 6 and hit keyframe, at 0 0.05 set frame to 7 and keyframe, at 0 0.1 set frame to 8 and keyframe, at 0 0.15 set frame to 9 and keyframe, then go to animation, new, name it jump, set the total time to 0 0.1, set frame to 11, 11 and keyframe, then go to animation, new, name it fall, set the total time to 0 0.1, then set frame to 12 and keyframe, add a collision shape 2D node to the scene, set the shape to a rectangle 2D, and set the size to 5 by 6, add a node 2D node to the scene, right click, rename, rename it to attack, we add this node so we can rotate the attack sprite independently, and a sprite 2D node as a child of the attack node, this will be the attack sprite, set the texture to the attack arrow that you can download for free, link in the description, set the texture to nearest as we're using pixel art, additionally we apply an offset of 1 on the x axis, so that the center position of the arrow rests at a position of 0, 0, as we intend to move the x axis of the arrow in a tween animation later, and by having the attack parent's rotation degree change, we can alter the direction of the attack without needing to change the axis that the arrow moves towards, and an area to denote as a child of the attack sprite, right click, rename, rename it to attack area 2D, add a collision shape to denote as a child of the attack area 2D, set the shape to a rectangle 2D, with a size of 5x6, and a position of 2.5 on the x axis, this collision shape is what will detect the enemies and hazards that the player can pogo or noodle jump on, additionally we make the area 2D a child of the attack sprite, so that the area moves with the sprite when the sprite's position changes, finally select the character body 2D node, and add a script, inside the script we will define 8 variables in Five constants. First, we define four on ready variables that reference the various nodes in the player scene. We use on ready so we can grab this variable instead of the path to the node. This will make the code cleaner and more readable. Additionally, in the case that we rename any of these nodes or move them around in the scene tree, we will only need to edit one path rather than every path for every time we reference the node in the script. For the standard platformer movement, we will use constant instead of variable. A constant is the same thing as a variable, but it can't have its value changed during runtime when the game is playing, which I don't intend to change any of these values during runtime. However, if you do, simply make these variables. Max speed is the maximum speed we move horizontally. Acceleration of friction is how fast we slow down or reach the max speed. Jump height is how high we jump, and gravity is how much we move the player down by each frame. Lookter is the look direction of the player. This will later be used for the attack direction. For the attack, total attack duration is how long in seconds that the attack lasts for. Attack duration timer is a timer that keeps track of how long we have been attacking for. And attack distance is the amount the attack arrow moves away from the player when attacking. Inside the built-in ready function, we will first add the player to a group called player. This line of code may not be needed in your game. As for my game, it is used by enemies and hazards to detect whether they are colliding with the player node or not. Although, feel free to use whatever system you have for detecting the player node. As checking the player group will not occur later in this tutorial. We will then set modulate.a of the attack sprite to zero. This will make the attack sprite invisible as we intend to fade it in and out when attacking and finishing an attack. Then we disable the attack area 2D's collision shape 2D node as we will only enable it when attacking. Now for the player's horizontal movement, we will define a variable called x input which will be equal to a negative one if the first input is pressed, else it will equal a positive one if the second input is being pressed. We will then set velocity.x to alert, which alert moves the first value towards the second at a speed of the third, which is also known as the weight. We will define a custom variable for the weight as we want to make the code cleaner and easy to read. For the velocity weight, we will check if we want to use acceleration or friction based on if x input, meaning that x input is not zero and we are either pressing left or right. Then we make this negative as we want to move towards the max speed, not away from it. Then we multiply by delta to ensure that it is frame rate independent, as delta represents the amount of time since the previous frame. Exp is an exponential function that returns the mathematical constant of e to the power of what is inside the brackets. This tells us the exact fraction of what we should apply this frame to move towards the max speed. And finally, we do 1.0 minus the exponential function to turn what remains into what we actually apply this frame, because we need the amount to apply, not the amount that remains. And for the horizontal look direction, we check if x x input, meaning that x input is equal to either negative 1 or positive 1. Then we set look do dot x to x input. Additionally, we check if x input to ensure that the horizontal look direction can never be 0, as the player is always looking either left or right. Now for the player's vertical movement and look direction. For the vertical look direction, we create a variable called y input, which is the same as x input, instead of providing a negative 1 if the up key is pressed, also to provide a positive 1 if the down key is being pressed. And we simply set look do dot y to the y input variable, without needing to check if y input is not equal to 0, as a platforming character is never always looking up or down, but they are always looking left or right. Now for jumping, we must create a separate input compared to looking up, as to ensure the attack direction doesn't get set when the player is holding down the jump key. We can do this by going to project, project settings, then under input map, create a new action called jump, and press add, then press the plus to add a key, type z, press ok, then back in the script, we will check if the player is on the floor and that they just press the jump input, then we set velocity.y to jump high, and to apply gravity we simply add gravity to velocity.y, then finally to make the player move based on the velocity variable, we will call move and slide. Now for the player's animation, we will create a custom function called animation, which will have a built-in variable called x input, that will be passed later in the physics process function when we call this function.
true. Inside, we set the player sprite's flip H to be false if the player is looking to the right, and else we set it to true. If your player looks to the left by default, then feel free to reverse this greater than sign. Now for the frame animation, we will check if the player is on the ground, then we will grab the frame animation player and play the walk animation if X input is not equal to zero, else we will play idle, and in the case if the player is not on the floor, then we grab the frame animation player, and we play the fall animation if velocity.y is more than zero, else we will play the jump animation. Then inside the physics process function, we will call the animation function passing X input. Now for the player attacking, we will create a custom function called attack logic, which will have a built-in variable called delta, which will be equal to the physics process delta variable when we call this function later. Then before we continue, we must create an input key for attacking, go to project, project settings, create a new action called attack, and press add, then press the plus to add a key, type X and press OK, and now back inside the attack logic function, we will check if the attack duration timer is equal to zero, meaning that we aren't currently attacking, then we will check if we just press the attack input key, if so, then we will set the direction of the attack, this is done by setting the attack parent's rotation degrees, the attack parent is the node 2D we are named attack, we set the rotation degrees to be in the direction that the player is looking towards, additionally we prioritize the vertical look direction, as Hollow Knight prioritizes the vertical look direction over the horizontal, additionally we check if the player is looking up or if they are on the ground, meaning that the player is either on the ground and can only attack upwards, else if they are on the ground and trying to attack downwards, then we will just use the horizontal direction instead, then we enable the collision shape 2D of the attack area 2D, as we want to detect enemies and hazards now, then we start the attack duration timer by setting it to the total attack duration, and for the attacks tween animation, for the position we first reset the X position of the attack sprite, then we create a variable for tweening the X position, we use create tween to create the tween, then we set the transition to back, and the easing to ease out, this will change the way the animation occurs compared to one that is linear, and will make the animation look more impactful, then we grab the attack pause tween, call the tween property function, passing the attack sprite that we want to affect, their X position, the target of attack distance, and the total attack duration so that the tween animation lasts for the entire time of the attack. Now for fading in and out the attack sprite, we create another tween, with the same transition and easing as the position tween, then we grab the attack modulate tween, calling the tween property function, passing the attack sprite, then modulate.a property, the goal of 1.0 as we want to make them visible first, and 10% of the attack duration. This means that after 10% of the attack duration the attack sprite will be fully visible, then to make this sprite become invisible after, we will do the same tween property function as before, instead using chain to make this tween property function run after the tween has completed its first tween property function, then we pass 0.0, .0 to make the sprite invisible, then we pass the remaining 90% of the total attack duration. Now in the case of the player is attacking and the attack duration timer is not equal to 0, then we set the attack duration timer to a max with 0 and the attack duration timer minus delta. Doing attack duration timer minus delta will tick the timer down, as delta represents the amount of time since the previous frame. Additionally, this will also make the timer frame rate independent, and using max will ensure that the attack duration timer can't be less than 0, as max returns the largest number separated by the commas. Then we check if the attack duration timer has reached 0. If so, then we disable the attack area 2D's collision shape. Back inside the physics process function, we will call the attack logic function, passing the physics process built-in delta variable. Now to make it so that you can pogo or needle jump off of enemies and hazards, go to the enemy or hazard scene. If they have a script, then make sure they either add themselves to a group called can pogo. However, if the node is not a body and instead uses an area 2D, then add the area 2D to the group instead. Alternatively, if the enemy or hazard doesn't have a script, then you can add them to the group manually by selecting the body or the area 2D, then going to node, groups, press the plus, type can pogo as the name. We will then enable global so you can just press a button on other scenes to add them to this group, avoiding potential misspelling, and press OK. You should now see this option for adding a node to the Campogo group in other scenes in your game. Additionally, because this is a global group, project, project settings, go to globals, then groups, you can now find that group here, which you can edit the name in the case that you misspelt it by double clicking it, or you can remove the group by pressing the trash icon. And if you don't enable delete references from all scenes, then the group will just become a local scene group instead of deleting it. Now to make the player detect and react to enemies and hazards that the player can pogo on, we need a new function in the player called attack area hit. This will have a built-in variable for the target node, which is the node that the player is hitting with their attack area 2D. Inside, we'll check if the target node is the player. If so, then we call return to skip all the code below. Then we check if the direct target node is in the group can pogo, or if the target node has a parent, and that parent is inside the can pogo group. Then for our pogo code, we simply just run the player's jump code. Now to make this function activate when the area 2D hits an enemy or hazard, inside the built-in ready function, we will grab the attack area 2D and connect its area entered and body entered signals to the attack area hit function. Now you have an attack system that can pogo or needle jump off of enemies and hazards, like the game Hollow Knight, that you can add to any of your 2D Metroidvania games. And don't forget, you can check out the project files, link in the description.